yo, yo, yo. I got something for you. You know what I'm saying? But first, got to feed the machine. Headed over there to get my fat boy on. You feel me? You figure deals me? Got something for you after this. 100. Hashtag DOTG with back. Hashtag boots on the ground with back for what's mine. 100. I said I'm sleeping on the lane. Careful with my dream. Sleeping on that lane. Careful with yeah. my dream. Sleeping on that lane. Careful with my dream. Sleeping on that lane. Careful with my dream. with the cataracts I'ma zoom in let's walk hashtag botg with back hashtag boots on the ground with back for what's mine yeah we up in these hills in the atlanta georgia area that ga red clay yeah as kids in savannah georgia we used to make the little mud pies and chew on some of that red clay as kids you know what i'm saying it was funny then, but now we know it. it got a lot of medicinal purposes. That GA red clay, there it is. Now here we are. Told you I got something for you. There it is. The Etowah Mounds, historic site. Yeah, this gonna be a, a dope one right here. Get your popcorn, get ready, get your pen and pad. Yeah, yeah. Let's walk, let's see what's happening. Walk off in here. Take your shoes off for these grounds are holy. Shout out to the witch doctor, outcast, goody mob. We off in here. We off in here. And when Nagi said, feathers up. So you know I had to put the feathers on. Check him out. You see the eagle, you see the feathers. 100. I see some interesting things right here. Some of the names that was on these trees. See what we can see. These grounds are holy. This one. Let's say the big leaf magnolia said take care of sinus problems y'all see that see that what the ancestors did now these become all your medicine now but see it was free back then but now they came and put the tax on everything like the fur trade what the dutch did with the with the fish charging you that's a iron weed this is iron weed Anybody looking? <laughs> I might have to get some of that for the cataracts, you hear me? Yeah. Uh, I'm not taking it from the ancestors. I'll just borrow some. This is Muscogee Creek, Cherokee. My elder told me my ancestor said I was Cherokee as a kid, but didn't understand. So I appreciate all y'all when we digging on information. You know what I'm saying? We help each other. Power to the nation. Power to the nation. Hashtag BOTG with back. Boots on the ground with back for what's mine. Get ready. Here we go. Check this out. It says Ottawa Chief. It don't say what chief. So this is a depiction. But I was checking him out, getting on his attire. 
Get you close to that face. Look like any of your people, any of your family. Looking at the medallion. Anybody know what that means? I see the beads. And they describe the Indians. They always say they were well built, muscular. From what I read, come down here to the waistband. That design. Anybody see things that they know? Is that fringes or I don't know. Some people say what they say. Just wanted to get check him out. Of course he's strapped. See the hatchet? See the feathers? He's got his footwear. All right, let's go in. See what they got on the wall. Y'all can see. Are these ancient artifacts or were they just, you know, remade and, you know, I don't know, I don't know. I'm just showing y'all. You know what I'm saying? I only got a half a cent of information, so <laughs> you have to do your own due diligence. But we're going to put it all together. We're going to pull it all together. See what you see. I don't know. Um, then we're going to go inside. You know, I got you. I got you. Don't worry. Don't worry. Get you all inside. So that's what we got right there. That's what we got right there, family. If you didn't see nothing, just pause the video, zoom in or whatever. You know what I'm saying? We'll be back. Oh, that's right Get this work in, you know what I'm saying? Pray to the ancestors. Because I don't live up here. But this is the, you see the Ottawa Waffle and Dome House. Maybe I'm saying that wrong. But don't worry, I'll get the pictures for you. So we're going to go off in here and see what's up. Hashtag BOTG with back. Boots on the ground with back. Man, this is short. Who fitting up in here? I gotta bend down. Well, let's see what's happening. Hope ain't no surprises. Play no game. Ah, damn it, I bumped my head. All right, all jokes aside. This is, you know, it's a reconstruction of it. That doorway is like five foot. I guess that's where you let the smoke out, let the sun in. This is wow. We ain't even get to the good, good part. I'm telling you, this is, they say it's 53 acres. Pick up a little bit of reading out here, see what's going on. The lighting is bad, family. Look like it's going to storm, but I'm trying to get the work in before. But it says ground penetrating radar. 
GPR uses high frequency radio waves to transmit into the ground. This non-destructive method records variations in a return signal that may indicate very, very archaeological features such as structures, fire pits, and burials. The depth of the GPR is limited by the electrical conductive of the ground, the transmitted center frequency, and the radiated power. When the ground is more conductive, the penetration depth decreases. Here's at Ottawa, our clay Aladdin soils hamper penetration. My bad family, I couldn't even see the words. <laughs> but let's, let's keep it moving though, let's keep it moving. Man. Hashtag BOTG with back. Boots on the ground with back. There we go right here. The defense ditch burial pit. All right, and they got the pits right here, I'm gonna show you. The Ottawa formed the southern border of the village, a series of ball pits connected by a large ditch, one nine to 10 feet deep, surrounded the remainder of the site. Originally, the ditch enclosed more than 50 acres before portions were filled during the 19th century for archaeology purposes. What purposes? 19th century, so the 1800s. We know a lot of stuff was going on with 1800s. Mm-hmm. All right, let's get it. Using handmade stone tools, the native people dug soil, forming the ball pit and ditch, and carried it in baskets to build six earth mounds, earthen mounds. Mound building occurred at the site for more than 300 years. With removal of a mound, a new mound building occurred at various times. Don't worry, I got the steel for you so you can go get to it. Let's look at some of these ditches. Yeah, that's pretty deep. Wow. And I'm sitting up here on top of the bridge. Hashtag BOTG with back. Yeah, I'm sitting, I'm up pretty high. Let's see what's going on. Yeah, let's see what's going on. The Indians are here. Native grass planted at Ottawa. The return of the native grasses. I got the steel for you. You can read up on it. All right, we about to get to it. Y'all see it over there. We coming. Hold on. We coming. Just want to give you a panoramic view. You feel me? All right. I wonder what all this was though, because they got the mounds up here. This is a huge mound. Word up, the video ain't even doing it no justice. You gotta come put boots on the ground. You feel me? We getting up in there. They go nature, gotta get the birds. Shout out to Cool Kid. Cool Kids Worldwide Let's Play on YouTube. Like, share. Let's check it out. A chiefly village of the Ottawa. Some say Ottawa. So, you know, I apologize. So let's see what we got going on. All right. The Ottawa village increased and decreased in size and populations throughout its 600 year of occupation. And that's just what they telling us, right? Village residents supplied the labor and supported the society's elite. It's always a caste system everywhere you go. They raised crops, hunted, hunted and fished, built mounds and palisades, made tools, baskets, and pottery, prepared hit, prepared hides. Yep, you know they was yeah selling them furs and everything. That's how they make clothing. For those that don't know, you know, 
cook train their children or they're doing the homeschooling. <laughs> they took us away from homeschooling and indoctrinated us with a lot of stuff. Yeah, that part. We ain't playing no games. We know now. Shout out to all y'all doing a beautiful job. Traded with other villagers. Yep. You're different. Through the genealogy, you might find different tribes in, in your genealogy. Not saying that's for everybody, but just saying. Play games of Chunky. There it is. And that's coming out of South uh, Central America, South America, Omex Mayans, Aztec area, right? Let, let's check that out. They're going to drop right there in your face. Celebrate it, the seasons and worship their gods. So they will not all mind of these. So they got an S on there. So many gods, I guess, whatever. You know, many were trained to carry out specific tasks. As such of the production of chip or ground tools, others created beautiful hide garments or copper ornaments worn by Etowa Elite. Them boys were stunting and the women shining. I got the new fur on. What is that, velvet? <laughs> yeah, on, on top of the game. You feel me? Then they say, at times, disease, famine, drought, flood, fires, always a fire harsh winters and season storms drove the people from their homes into villages uh they're not telling you about indian slave trade though um they say what the make the demise of all indians they always say is the disease disease not saying it didn't play a part but you had the indian slave trade too that was going on indians and indians enslaving indians and um yeah that part but i'm gonna get the steel a uh, shot for you. After the 1550s, Ottawa occupants moved down river towards Coosa River and Alabama. Told they were creeks and other tribes too. Some researchers believe the arrival of the addition of additional Europeans caused this social disruption. That's a fact. And they were already here too. It is well documented that European diseases such as measles and smallpox declined many native populations. By the time the Etowah River Valley saw its first European settlements, the local Cherokee Indians attributed the mounds to an ancient people remember only in their oral tradition. So if that said, that the scientists or whatever, the, some researchers use oral tradition, and I use my oral tradition, just using myself, when my elder said that I was a Cherokee as a youth. Yeah, what's wrong with my oral tradition? Yeah, I don't look like uh, what they taught me in school, so-called Indians supposed to look like, but still we go get the genealogy. We go get the genealogy. But let's get to it though. Let's get to it. Yeah. Massive mile. We on the way, though. Hashtag BOTG. We're back. I'm going to take you out to the top of the mountain. The mound. You know? Wipe your shoes off. Feet off. These grounds are holy. Pour out some libation. It's water, but... And put something in the air that smoke something. We going over there. Let's check out this. Let's see what we got here. Let's see what we got here. See if any hijack around here. Palace ceremonies and games. That's the pictures they got up. I didn't draw. I don't know. The most recent archaeological work at the Etowah Mounds. Etowah indicates that one large plaza exited to the east of the mound. A smaller plaza may have been presented beside other mounds at various times. The plaza served the community as a gathering place for ceremony, storytelling, trade, greeting visitors, and even playing games such as Chunky. There we go again. Yeah. Or the Native Americans stickball game from which lacrosse originated. See how they be lying? Just like they told you basketball come not from uh, 
the Americas originated. Yep. Yeah, this is some dope drop, though. Native Americans of Southeast place great importance on the game of Chunky or Chunky. They got it spelled two different ways, so make sure I get y'all that drop. Played by the Warriors where beautifully symmetrical dice cold stones Chunky serve as a general amusement at test of stamina and game of chance. Most often played with only two players per side. Each player carried a pole or a spear from eight to 15 feet in length. Were they pole voting? 15 feet. Okay. Communities considered their chunky stone prize possessions awarded the strictest care. They were often passed down from generation to generation. Generational wealth group. Generation to generation. That's what I'm about. That's what it's about. Get these kids right. We'll be right back. Headed to the Big Chief House. The Big Chief House. 65 feet in height. Headed to the Big Chief House. Let's check it out. Let's check it out. Let's read it. Get you a little view right there. Huh. Pyramids, huh? How many pyramids in the Americas? <laughs> yeah. Let's get it. It says... Etowah was a Native American chieftain. Chiefdoms consist of a highly structured social order and permanent political officer. officers. Kinship rule guided social ranking and political officers received the right to rule by virtue of birth. So is that a bloodline we're talking about, family? Is that a genealogy? Virtue of birth. Who your people is. Who you with. As both a political and religious leader, a chief ruled until his death from his temple and home atop Mount A. The chief could rule his people and perform religious ceremonies. Again, that's the mound, 65 feet in height. Now, Georgia chieftain society emerged around AD 1000, right? Early Spanish explorers, including the Soto, including the Soto, who visit the Etowah around AD 1540, describe the complex and paramount chiefdom which individuals, chiefs, and their supporters form alliances and fought wars to establish their regional political dominance. Okay? So he said he saw something complex. But they said that the so-called Indians were primitive. They couldn't build nothing like that. So when the archaeologists go and dig up stuff, they start finding people, follow the money, who support, who's financial backing these people, and they won't tell you who the true people are or who was here. Big Chief House. Let's go. Let's go. Hashtag VOTG with back. We're going to get to the top. I'm going to take you around the back. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, family, we're at the top of the mound. This is the chief's mound, right? And he will look at what they call subjects or his family, his people. I wouldn't call them subjects. But this is the chief's mound, right? So let's go over here and read a little bit. It would have been a house on top. Then we got other three miles. Remember, this is on 53, 54 acres. I think it was more than that. You know, when we bust the mountain down to a pebble, speaking of mountains. Yeah, we get serious, you know. So they showing how the chief would have been. And I'm standing where the chief would have stood. Um, far as what we're saying. So it said, Etowah chiefs had the power to make war or peace. He distributed stored food to his people from a public granary in times of need or famine and could soliditate tribute for, from over 
lying villages he also controlled. And that's how we talk about confederations are built. Smaller tribes go into the bigger tribes, but they will have to pay that tribute. You know, waters and wars, we see that all over the place. You know, the Etowah River Valley was once filled with small farmsteads. The chief lived with his family on the mound in a large house made from waffle interwoven twigs or branches and dubbed clay based plaster trying to keep up with it so like i said you know me i watch the animals and the animals use twigs i wonder that's how our people um learned it from because you got to learn something from something it's like when you braid the hair it had to come from something right but check it out though you know i got the steel shots for you to get to it but this is the top of the mountain baby I made it, Mom, top of the world. That's where the chief was at. Now we're gonna check out that mound. And we're gonna check out this other mound. Now this track, the Etowah River is over there towards where the mountains over that way, and it runs this way. All right? Hashtag, B-O-T-G with back. You know? Now, we're gonna walk around the back. Mr. Chief, him and his family will be right here. Heavily protected. Right? He can see everything moving. Right? They didn't teach me this in school. They taught me some other stuff. Heavy indoctrination. My elder, my ancestor told me who I was. Went to an indoctrinated school and came back with what they told me. And my family was like, who told you that? They go that GA Red Clay. Just my story. But we do the genealogy. We at the Etowah Miles. Etowah, forgive me if I'm mispronouncing it. All right, let's go to the other mile. Hashtag BOTG with back. I'm about to put something in the air for the fam. Smoke one. TG with back. You know what I'm saying? It's the back of the chief house. 65 feet in height. I got that still for you so you can read more on it. Boots on the ground. We take the books and the looks and we go put boots to them and, and really see what's happening. Sometimes you feel something. Like you're, you're attached to it some type of way. When you put them boots on it. You feel me? Got to get out here in these streets. Okay, okay, this is Mount B. Let's see what's happening. Let's see what's happening. What is this? It says archaeological, archaeological drawing of post patterns from structure three. All right. We have to bust this mountain down to a pebble. What's going on? You know they heavy with the pin game. I'm questioning everything. All right. We at the top of the mound. B, they say. That's the back of the chief house. Got to pull out the libations. Respect, respect. For these grounds are holy. This is the mound they call Mound B. 
So the chief would have been over here with his family. They say in this mound over here would have been like, I guess the priest. I'm not gonna say I'm guess, we're gonna read it. You had your warrior class, class system family, you know? Just like the father, the mother, the children, you know? Nothing new under the sun. You've been doing this. But those who have, not including everybody. You're going back there to the river. Don't worry, I got you. Hashtag BOTG with back. Imagine all this, family. Imagine all this. See these weeds? What's growing here now? Imagine all this here was, was which it was. You have your corn. You have the three sisters, right? You got the corn, the squash, and the beans, right? You have it all around your house. Farming. This will make a strong nation. Right, you're self-sufficient. Now right over there where we going is where the lake is. So they had the water supply. They had the water supply. So just imagine, take yourself back. Take yourself back and just imagine how powerful they were. Because if you can feed the people, then you can teach the people. You can't tell nobody nothing on a hungry stomach. That's why I believe in public schools, they have breakfast first. Then they can go and indoctrinate you. Because I can't hear you if I'm hungry. What you gonna tell me? And that's what's still going on tonight. I mean today. That's why I say the hamster wheel. Get off the hamster wheel, get on the spider wheel. My people are starving now. From all aspects. So now a lot of us are just the, what we call wilding out. But if you can feed the people, you can teach the people something. They took out the food. Not only food nourishment, but nourishment for the soul, body, and mind. Just imagine. Get off the hamster wheel. Same game being played. Let's take care of our peoples. Once again, power to the nation. All right. We have arrived. They call this one Mound C, Ceremony. This is where they did it at? Okay, let's see, let's see, let's see. Let's get a little bit of reading there. Sketch, see that? Sketch of copper headdress ornament. My bad, let me get you right. It's a sketch though, so you know. Let's say Alabama, Quasico tribe town of Creek, of the Creek Nation of Oklahoma, Cherokee Nation of Oklahoma, Eastern Band of Cherokee Indians, Collegi tribe town of the Creek Indians of Oklahoma, Muscogee Creek Nation, what we got, Porch Bank of Creek Nation, I don't know this word, Talapuluka. Tribal Town of Creek Nation, Indians of Oklahoma, United Kitawaba. I know I said that wrong, but I just seen that name. Band of Creek Cherokees. It says, in 1990, President George W. Bush signed into law the Native American Grave Protection and Reparations Act. So when y'all see that, that's what that means. Let's see what else they got over here. I like, I like to go older. I like to go way back. Like this. Let's get this here. Much of Etowah's fame derives from this impressive Native American art uh, objects recovered from Mound C. This is Mound C. We about to go up there. So they said they got this from Mound C. Right? 
burial during archaeologists' excavation. The large quantity of ceremony goods reveal how village residents participated heavily in the exchange of exotic materials such as Tennessee cheap or flint. Golf, uh, golf coast shells and copper from the Great Lakes area. Other burial objects indicate visitation of the site by early European explorers such as Hernando de Soto in 18, AD 1540. Archaeologists begin excavating Mount C as early as 1883. Other complete Completed the work in 1961. The mound you can see today is reconstructed. All right, so they tore it down and built it back up. But well, I wonder if they telling us the truth, because like I say, the 1800s in these Americas, you know, just saying, y'all know, a lot of pin game going on, a lot of hiding the truth going on, you know. But let's go up here and see what's happening. At hashtag BOTG with back. Boots on the ground, we're back for what's mine. There we go. There we go. Top of Mount C. Again, they go to Chief right there. Big Chief over there, Mount A. There you go, Mount B. Would have been the priest area, more than likely, they say. Now we're here on Mount C. Now over there, I can just see. I wish I had my fishing pole. We going to that water so clear. I can see it from here. Honor and respect to the ancestors. Appreciation. 100. Let's keep moving. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's keep moving. Mound C. So they found a lot of artifacts in that mound. Here we go. Yeah, this is definitely Indian territory, especially where I'm from. We love our shade, innit? <laughs> innit, man? <laughs> we love our shade here down south. Yeah. Oh, man, this is beautiful. Man, sit right here. I know I would go to South Carolina. They have the drum going with the fire, barbecuing, grilling. Like my folks say, getting pickled up. They be on that jungle juice. You know what I'm saying? Kill something, barbecue. You know what I'm saying? Just chilling. Just chilling, man. Ain't nothing new under the sun. Ain't nothing new under the sun. It feels so familiar. It feels so familiar. Yeah, it feels so familiar. Yes, yeah, sir. We going to that water. Here go the trail right here. Here go the trail right here. Right down there. Raise your hand if you want to go. If you're scared, say you're scared. It's in the woods. Eastland Woodland, baby. Yeah, go look at some of this beautiful water they got going on. Oh, man. Giant blue heron. Let's see what's happening. This majestic slate bird, bluebird, stands about four feet tall. It is frequently seen standing motionless in the water, waiting to catch a fish, crab, or other unsuspecting marsh creatures is nest in colonies. Oh, colonies, they go that word, colonies, a colonist. <laughs> yeah, I mean, often, often of several hundred birds with numerous nests per tree. So they roll deep. And they got stealth mode. They say they just be sitting there motionless. Yeah. Yeah. Might not even know. Oh man, look how clear this water is. Our Savannah water is the worst. Oh man, where's my fishing pole? I know what I'm gonna do. Where I'm from, they get the bamboo sticks, right? When I was a kid, they used to have bamboo sticks and put a string to it. And that was a fishing pole. 
You know what I'm saying? That's that's my culture. People ask me, well, what's your culture? That's how we did it. You go pull a tree, put a string on it, put a worm on it or something, right? And you get right to it. These beautiful rocks. This is beautiful. Yeah, we going down closest back and get you. Walk with me, family. Hold me down, though. Don't hold me down, you know? Look at that. This is the Etowah River. So they had a way to feed themselves. They had a water source where they could garden and have a lot of food and have a big tribe because they could feed the family. So all I had to do was come right here to the stream, get your buckets or whatever. I know I said buckets, but they didn't have no plastic. You don't know. I need me a fishing rod. Get a little closer. It's calling me like Pookie. Telling you, fam, this water is clear. You can see the rock. It's not like in Florida, though. When I went to Tampa and the land, uh, Orlando, or when I went to uh, Key West, Key West got some of the beautifulest water down there. I'm telling you. You can sustain yourself right here. You can sustain yourself right here, family. And in wartime, if they had to come across the river, you could just sit there and watch them coming, right? Y'all know me, I ain't gonna make it that complicated for you. I don't have all your books. You know what I'm saying? Only got a half a cent of information. Headed down the trail, fam. Let's go. See what we can find in here. Hashtag, B-O-T-G with back. That's boots on the ground with back. Back for what's mine. Indians was all in here. See what's happening. Got the birds going off. Woodlands, baby. Any of y'all see y'all self in here? Y'all see y'all people around here? And hey, where the corner store at, homie? Oh, y'all selling it out the house? Okay, that's what's up. The Indian way. <laughs> Nothing new under the sun. The bluebird. Got the shortcut, another way to the water, right? Get you some crabs out of here, some shrimp, fish, eat good. Eat good. Nothing changed too much. At least in my story. My people ate the deer, the possum, the raccoon, you know, turtles, they told me, ducks, alligators, coming out of South Carolina, they're coming out of Georgia, a Cherokee line comes off out of Stilson, Georgia, and we going through the trail, what do we have here? Anything in the bushes, come out, because I ain't responsible. <laughs> Just joking, this ride with back, y'all. Don't pay me no mind, man. Got to laugh and enjoy life, too. You feel me? Yeah. 
walking through these woods. Now let's go inside the building and let's see what they gotta do, what they gotta say. Now we get more to the literature, right? I like to put boots on the ground. a good job to have the rest of the residents there were no homeless people you know you took care of your people sorry for that glare the lights in here you see in the back bring it up for you oh my bad so the family left us a center square right here how your games at or your ceremonies I won't say sacrifice because I don't know you know we're not going to speculate everybody wasn't doing everything the same different tribe, different nations everybody wasn't doing the same thing I head down to the canoes and I showed you the boat they got in there now let's go deal with somebody else that we know very well <laughs> Hashtag BOTG with back. Boots on the ground with back. I'm gonna stop here real quick. This is why they it was picked for st strategic so you can be safe from your enemies and you also can eat and feed because like I said out there a bunch of water, a bunch of trees. You had what you needed. So let's check this out. Hey go, hey go you guy. Oh, it goes those conquistadors, the De Soto expedition at Etowa. Oh, oh, this was the route they say he took. A lot of our families in that area. I see Estelle, South Carolina. He didn't come through still since I, but that could be a migration pattern of my family. Archaeologist Charles Hudson mapped of the Soda Expedition route in the Southeast States. All right, so let's get it. Let's see what they're saying. Let me see, in May, let me back it up so I can give it to you. In May 1539, Hernando de Soto arrived on the west coast of Florida near present-day Barrington with over 620 men and 220 horses. He became a three-year journey, came a three-year journey into the southeast interior of the North American continent. Numerous archaeologists and historians let me back it up so you can see. Have examined historical documents and archaeology evidence to discover the map 
and the map his route across the south. On August 20, 1540, DeSoto and his army departed from a main Indian town of Cusco. Some people say Cusco, you know, and traveled to the south, crossing the Etowah River at the town of Etowah, now called Etowah. You know, before proceeding to the chieftains of, I'm gonna show you the word, Yuba Hali. Maybe I'm saying it wrong. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I am. At present day Rome, Georgia. So that's North Georgia. That's definitely Cher a Cherokee area. Uh, it's called Rome, Georgia now. Um, here at Etowah, archaeologists have unearthed several artifacts that date to the period of De Soda travels indicating his presence in the area. As they traveled across the interior, though these explorers fought battles, claimed captives, stole from, and traded with the native people they encountered. So you definitely had an Indian slave trade. We talk about indigenous people. He took captives and we know they put them on the boats. That's a fact. Some of these Spaniards died, some became lost, others were wounded and some left there countrymen and lived with tribes they encountered. That's a fact. So you start getting a mixture. You start getting a mixture. Along the way, they left behind and lost items that helped archaeologists identify the route of passage. So you know what we'll be digging on? It's just coming back and really show that we're not capping. You know? Sometimes we just watch the hijack with the pictures because a lot of it, you know, coming out of the 1800s area for our study. And I'm not going to say all of it is cap, but um, we just keep digging. We just keep digging some of the stuff they found. And it's crazy when we talk about some Indian tribes sold the land for trinkets uh, like old dirty bastard said his father did Manhattan. He said it in a song, not me. He says sold Manhattan for trinkets. And his family says that. Um, a lot of things were forced too, but uh, yeah. I wanted to make sure I get that to y'all. And that route, when we do our migration stories, see if you in that route. I definitely see my people that where they are now you know, coming through that route. But that's what years ago, so I gotta continue to do the work. They go out time high. See those names, Tool. Y'all see those names? Appalachie, going down to Florida, Ocala, Oichi. A lot of these names are still there. So when I say put boots on the ground, this stuff is still in your face. See the names, you see your family, you see your family, hashtag BOTG with that. 100. I'm trying to get a good picture of that light bad back to the family. But if you can see, they saying that's Hernando de Soto. He was funded by the Holy Roman Emperor Charles V, Charles I of Spain. You know, Charles V is, that's the same one that uh, when they went down to the Aztecs and uh, all that damage was done by Charles V, the swarthy, tiny European king that sat on three thrones. And right here you can see when we read about the attack dogs, this is a depiction of the attack dogs. So I wanted to make sure I got that in your diet before, yeah. But there you go right there, Holy Roman Emperor, Charles V, the tiny, swarthy. Yeah, Charles V, we got you, homie. in the ditch, one going in the ditch. With the tribe, what's going on? What you 
What y'all did? What's happening? All right, we got to find some literature and read. These are the two ones that you always see on the website when they talk about the Edward Mounds. They say they found this in Mound C. Or some saying it's a recreation, I don't know. And I guess that's the picture of the ones that's in the ditch. It says a man and a woman. Well, see, it says artistic, artistic guesswork. So, you know, we'll see. And I left a steal for this so y'all can read it. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, that was the Etowah Mounds. But we got in the do. Um... And like I said, it was different people in there as far as nationalities. Uh, I think I was the only one like me in there um, as far as the lookership that everybody's doing. You had some Asians in there with his family, couldn't speak a lot of English, you know, but he and I had a little chat. So-called white people in there, you know, I was in there with my, 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 my like what Nagi say, feathers up. I was in there with my, my, my eagle, my eagle shirt, you know what I'm saying, that's, that's beaded out with corn and feathers and and dream catchers, you know what I'm saying? And it was no judgment like that, them looking at me. I had this on, you know? You know, and uh, they just asked questions, you know? We just talked about what was going on, you know what I'm saying? And then asked me about my indigenous ties or what's the shirt mean or all the crazy stuff I be hearing people doing, right? People know what they know. They want to see if you know. Because I would enjoy the conversation, you feel me? But, uh, been about three hours out there, so I hope y'all enjoyed the video. Um, learn from it, you know what I'm saying? Let's continue to do what we do for those after us and appreciate those that ascended already. You know what I'm saying? Um, that's me. BOTG with back. Hashtag BOTG with back. 100, I'm 100, ghost. I'm ghost.